20. McCall LeDuc While responding to a call about a suspected drunk driver in Oviedo, Florida at 1.30 a.m. in April 2018, police found a young woman sitting on a curb near her red Mazda. Inside the car, officers found an open bottle of vodka and a jar of marijuana. The suspect, 21-year-old McCall LeDuc, was already on probation for a recent DUI conviction. She reportedly denied that the vodka belonged to her, but failed to convince police. She was arrested on suspicion of marijuana possession. Being a person under 21 in possession of alcohol, alcohol-related reckless driving, and resisting without violence. After placing LeDuc in the back of a squad car, the police noticed that she had slipped out of her handcuffs. They went to re-handcuff her and were appalled to discover that she'd allegedly urinated in the back of the car and spread it all over. In addition to the handful of charges she was already facing, she was hit with an additional count of health safety nuisance for urine-related misbehavior. 19. Erica Huerta and Stephen Perry In June 2011, a Florida couple was accused of being intimate in front of 50 onlookers at a family-friendly beach in Treasure Island. 21-year-old Erica Huerta of Tallahassee and 22-year-old Stephen Perry of Lutz were accused of going at it for at least a half hour while drunk. They were said to have engaged in various inappropriate acts that are usually only done behind closed doors. According to police, the couple was just 100 feet or 30.5 meters from a restaurant and even closer to beachgoers who were playing in the sand nearby. After kissing and fondling each other for a half hour, Huertas and Perry allegedly began doing the deed in plain view of people who were trying to enjoy their meal and their time and their time at the beach, prompting a disgusted onlooker to call the police. Officers responded to the scene at around 7.30 p.m. and quickly concluded that Huertas and Perry had been drinking heavily. They were each charged with one count of lewd and lascivious exhibition and were booked into the Pinellas County Jail on $10,000 bail. 18. Christina Revels Glick 36-year-old Christina Revels Glick likely had no idea her entire life was about to derail when she got caught pleasuring herself at a beach on Georgia's Tybee Island in 2021. Police confronted her after a fellow beachgoer reported her inappropriate behavior and initially denied the allegation, but eventually she admitted to it and apologized. Revels Glick claimed she only participated in the illicit act for 20 seconds and seemed shocked that people had witnessed it, but that didn't make it any less of a crime in the eyes of law enforcement. She was arrested on suspicion of indecent exposure and disorderly conduct. Body cam footage of the conversation between Revels Glick and the police went viral two years after her arrest in 2023. It's unclear why the video was released at that time, but it was followed up with news of a tragedy from the woman's family, who revealed that Revels Glick had passed away eight months after the incident. They stressed that her death had nothing to do with the embarrassing allegations over her behavior at the beach but admitted that her life spiraled downward due to substance abuse and other issues that she was struggling with at the time. Christina's body was found in her blood-covered apartment in March of 2022, after she failed to pay her rent on time, which was out of character. Accompanied by a neighbor, her landlord entered the unit to find the young woman dead from a gunshot wound with blood splattered on the walls and surfaces of several rooms. The death was ruled as self-inflicted and possibly accidental, although several neighbors recalled hearing a violent fight in the apartment around the time Christina was thought to have died, so some seemed to believe that she was murdered. 17. Samuel Jose Drinking too much alcohol is a bad idea to begin with. Doing it in the presence of your ex after ending a rocky relationship is an even worse move. But that's what 34-year-old Samuel Jost did in July 2023, 
when a woman he had parted ways with after an eight-year relationship invited him to her home in Plymouth, England. Jose allegedly drank four bottles of wine before crashing at his ex's house, then woke up a few hours later and immediately flew into a rage. While pacing around the apartment and yelling obscenities at passersby, Jose tried climbing outside through an open window. His ex and her mother held him back, only to become the new targets of his verbal abuse. The man's tantrum soon escalated into physical violence as he grabbed his ex's throat and threatened to kill her. He also allegedly threatened his ex's mother with a knife as the woman continued trying to stop him from leaving the property. Jose made his way outside, where he turned his anger toward unsuspecting strangers. He approached a maintenance worker and spat in the man's face while threatening him, then chased after the man as he tried to reach safety. The suspect's ex-girlfriend let the worker into her apartment and slammed the door shut as Jose tried to force his way inside. And as the victims called the police, Jose stripped naked and continued his tirade throughout the neighborhood. He was eventually wrestled into custody as he threatened responding officers and resisted being placed in handcuffs. After handcuffing the out-of-control suspect, police put him in leg restraints. The moment the officers removed the restraints in an attempt to put his clothes on, Jose kicked a cop in the face. He initially denied any wrongdoing, but eventually pleaded guilty to several crimes including multiple assault counts. The judge sentenced Jose to 21 months in prison for his regrettable behavior and banned him from going near the scene of his crimes for seven years. 16. Deborah Vogt and George O'Brien Employees at Jimmy B's Beach Bar in St. Pete Beach, Florida, caught a couple red-handed in the middle of being intimate when they entered the women's bathroom early one morning in December of 2019. Several disapproving customers had alerted security staff prior to the discovery being made at around half past midnight. According to an arrest affidavit, 62-year-old Deborah Vogt and 60-year-old George O'Brien refused to leave the nightclub upon being confronted by security. And while speaking with a responding deputy, they denied the allegation that they were being inappropriate in the bathroom. Noting in the arrest report that the pair seemed heavily intoxicated, the deputy also accused Vote and O'Brien of initially refusing to tell their names or provide their IDs. The suspects were reportedly combative as they were taken into custody on misdemeanor counts of trespassing, disorderly conduct, and resisting. Vote was hit with an additional count of assault for allegedly taking a swing at a cop. She was released from jail after posting a $600 bond, while O'Brien was released on his own recognizance. As a separate consequence, the pair were ordered to stay away from Jimmy B's beach bar. 15. Amanda Zolikoffer and Douglas Blancet As a so-called video vigilante, Oklahoma resident Brian Bates became nationally known for catching prostitutes and their clients conducting business on camera in public places and posting the footage on his website, johntv.com. In 2015, his work resulted in the arrest of 27-year-old Amanda Zolikoffer and 75-year-old Douglas Blancet, who allegedly were captured on drone footage while copulating in Blancet's pickup truck. Bates said that he followed Blancet's truck to a deserted road after he observed Zolikoffer entering the vehicle at a street corner where she was working. He parked on an adjacent street and deployed his drone, which filmed the two suspects in the act from just feet away before they noticed its presence and stopped what they were doing. They abruptly left the area, and Bates turned the footage over to Oklahoma City Sergeant and Vice Cop Ben Lacays who noted in a report that he was familiar with Zolikoffer and her involvement in prostitution-related activity. At the time, Zolikoffer already had convictions for prostitution, cocaine trafficking, larceny, and leaving the scene of an accident. 
She was facing public lewdness and stolen property charges in connection with unrelated cases, including one incident involving another convicted prostitute that Bates had also captured on camera. She and Blancet were each hit with one misdemeanor count of public lewdness in connection with the activity seen in the drone footage. A decade earlier, in 2005, Bates had been accused of paying prostitutes to be intimate with their clients in public places so he could catch them in the act and sell the footage to the media. According to investigators, he instructed prostitutes on how to complete the act with a high probability of success. Bates was also allegedly picky about the people he chose to film and told prostitutes to give a specific hand signal if they were dealing with a regular so he knew not to bother recording the interaction. Following a four-month investigation, he was charged with felony pandering, which is typically reserved for cases against pimps, and a misdemeanor count of aiding and abetting prostitution. Following his arrest, Bates issued a statement expressing his shock at the situation. He said that he hoped to resolve the matter within the coming days and weeks. The case was about to go to trial the following year when the judge suddenly dropped the case based on a technicality, leaving Bates free to continue his mission to expose the unsavory reality of what goes on in the city's streets. Opinions about the video vigilante remain divided, but he's continued to garner widespread attention and praise for his work. 14. Donald J. Schwartz Outdoor temperatures in Bay City, Michigan had plunged to a below freezing 23 degrees when police received a report about a drunk man in an orange jumpsuit behaving strangely in December 2016. By the time officers arrived at the home of 54-year-old Donald J. Schwartz, he'd removed the jumpsuit and thrown it in his front yard. When he realized the cops were at his house, he went inside the residence and screamed while smashing his front door screen and breaking glass. Schwartz put on a pair of pajamas and stepped back outside, only to re-enter the house while speaking with the police. Officers spoke with a woman crying in the living room and learned that the suspect struggled with mental health issues. She said that Schwartz had destroyed property and ordered her to clean it up before walking to a nearby bar. When she followed him in a car and tried to talk some sense into him, he allegedly threw various objects at her and yelled obscenities her way. During his conversation with the police, Schwartz allegedly shoved an officer, causing him to lose his balance and fall backward. He was tackled to the ground and handcuffed before being taken to a nearby hospital. After being discharged, he was booked into custody on a felony charge of assaulting, resisting or obstructing police, along with misdemeanor charges of obscene conduct and public intoxication. Later that month, Schwartz pleaded no contest to misdemeanor counts of public intoxication and attempted assaulting, resisting, or obstructing police. In exchange for his plea, the felony assaulting, resisting, or obstructing count and the obscene conduct charge were dropped. 13. Charm Gilbert and James Adams. Dubbed Florida's friendliest retirement hometown, The Villages is one of the largest retirement communities in America. It also has a reputation for being the STD capital of the United States, and has landed at the center of wild rumors about swinger parties and people getting it on in public. But this enclave of mostly 55 and up retirees is not as out of control as it's accused of being, and lewd behavior isn't tolerated the way the rumors might imply. 40-year-old Charm Gilbert and 47-year-old James Adams learned this lesson firsthand in October 2014, when they were arrested for fornicating near one of the community's entrances in Lady Lake. A Sumter County deputy was dispatched to the scene shortly before 9 a.m. in response to a report about two naked people making out. He arrived to find the couple having intercourse within direct view of the public. Adams reportedly told the deputy that he and Gilbert had gotten frisky outdoors because they had nowhere else to do the deed. They both pleaded no contest to one count each of indecent exposure and disorderly conduct 
and were sentenced to six months in jail. 12. Kenneth Allen Beck In what one news report described as a unique display of nakedness, a 64-year-old Riverton, Utah man named Kenneth Allen Beck was accused of running around naked in public with bells attached to his privates in May of 2016. Utah County deputies arrested the suspect after receiving a report of a naked man in the city of Spanish Fork. According to authorities, several witnesses reported seeing Beck's bizarre behavior. But by the time deputies arrived at the scene near the Diamond Fork Canyon hot springs, he was fully dressed. He allegedly admitted to the allegations, stating that he committed the inappropriate act just to get a reaction from spectators. At the time, Beck already had one criminal conviction under his belt for exposing himself to a waitress while ordering food at a restaurant in 2005. For his more recent act, he was charged with misdemeanor lewdness. If convicted, he could have faced a maximum sentence of up to a year in jail and a $2,500 fine. However, the outcome of the case is unclear. 11. Ashley Wetzel and Henry Niblack In December of 2016, a police officer witnessed a couple engaged in full-on intimacy in plain view of passersby along a Florida street in St. Petersburg. According to a police report, the cop arrived at the scene to find 50-year-old Henry Niblack standing behind 26-year-old Ashley Wetzel. Their pants were around their ankles, and the officer provided a detailed description of the couple's movements, which left no mysteries about what they were doing. But they didn't get to finish what they started, because they were both arrested on suspicion of exposure. Niblack, who reportedly works in construction, was released on his own recognizance. Wetzel, on the other hand, was held in custody on a $650 combined bond for the exposure charge and a pending theft case stemming from an unrelated incident. She also had a prior trespassing conviction from two months earlier, which made her ineligible for a pretrial diversion program. This meant that she potentially faced harsher consequences than her co-accused. 10. Alan Ibanez Diners were trying to enjoy an early morning meal at an IHOP restaurant in Clearwater, Florida in early 2020 when a man offered to show customers his privates. According to authorities, the disruption began at around 3 a.m. when 24-year-old Alan Ibanez entered the restaurant and started approaching tables with his perverted propositions. The manager asked him to leave, but he allegedly continued asking people if they wanted to see his goods. On one hand, it's better that Ibanez at least asked instead of actually exposing himself. But his behavior understandably made patrons feel uncomfortable, causing them to want to leave the restaurant. Police were called to the scene and Ibanez was arrested on suspicion of misdemeanor disorderly conduct. An arrest report noted that the suspect had allegedly been involved in several other disruptive incidents earlier in the evening before being confronted by law enforcement at the restaurant. Ibanez was detained at the Pinellas County Jail for 11 hours before being released. But just two hours after walking out of the doors, he was arrested in Largo for allegedly stealing two donuts valued at $1.98 from a Speedway convenience store. By the time police arrived at the business, Ibanez had eaten one of the donuts. He said that he had planned to give the other one to the police because he believed all cops love donuts. 9. Jose Caballero and Elisa Alvarez in many, if not most, cases, a couple will do little to no jail time for being intimate in public. But it's a serious crime that can land someone behind bars for months or longer, and can come with lifelong consequences, as one Florida couple learned in May of 2015. 40-year-old Jose Caballero and 20-year-old Elisa Alvarez were arrested nearly a year earlier after they were videotaped fornicating on a Manatee County beach in broad daylight. According to a probable cause affidavit, a witness named Emily Hall told responding officers that the illicit interactions began with fondling and progressed to intercourse in plain view of other beachgoers. 
She and six other disturbed individuals filled out reports describing what they saw. As a result, Caballero and Alvarez were charged with felony counts of lewd and lascivious behavior. They chose to take their case to trial, where several witnesses testified to seeing the pair grinding in an unmistakably inappropriate way that left nothing to the imagination. Despite the number of people who were willing to vouch for what they saw and the graphic details they provided on the stand, Caballero claimed that the witnesses were mistaken. The jury found both defendants guilty after deliberating for just 15 minutes. Because Alvarez had no prior arrests, she was likely to receive a far lighter sentence than Caballero, who was facing up to 15 years due to being arrested less than three years after his most recent release from prison. Alvarez was sentenced to time served, while Caballero was ordered to spend two and a half years behind bars. 8. Bodimani Rizby Jones Indonesia's ultra-conservative Aceh province is governed by Sharia law, which is both strict and comes with harsh punishments, including public canings. It's likely one of the worst possible places for someone to get drunk and go on a violent naked rampage. But that's what Australian surfer Bodie Mani Risby Jones was accused of doing in April of 2023. The 23-year-old was staying at a surfing resort on the island of Simalue when he allegedly went bananas during the early morning hours. A security guard tried to stop him from leaving the resort, but he managed to slip away from the property. Risby Jones was accused of running unclothed through the streets while chasing and striking innocent strangers, including a fisherman who fell off his motorbike and received dozens of stitches for a laceration to his leg. One local resident told reporters that the fisherman and another victim were about to buy cigarettes when Risby Jones suddenly appeared from a nearby ditch and rushed at them, prompting them to flee on the motorbike. The suspect was accused of lifting the bike off the ground, causing the two riders to fall off and resulting in the fisherman's injury. Infuriated by the young man's behavior, civilians chased him down, tackled him, and dragged him to a nearby police station. Risby Jones reportedly denied drinking alcohol, despite a half-empty bottle of vodka being found after his capture. Alcohol consumption is banned under Sharia law, which also criminalizes public nudity. But it was the suspect's violence against locals that seemed to land him in the worst trouble. If convicted as charged, Risby Jones could have faced up to five years in an Indonesian prison for the assault and 40 lashes in public for drinking alcohol. Luckily, though, he struck a deal and agreed to pay 250 million rupiah or 16,000 US dollars in restitution to the injured fisherman. Two months after the regrettable rampage, he was freed from Sinabong prison and was deported to Australia. Later on, he released a statement taking full responsibility for his embarrassing behavior and expressing his gratitude for being able to return home. 7. Susan Roskillo and Robert Kellogg a member of the public saw something they couldn't unsee in Clearwater, Florida on Thanksgiving in 2019. When they happened upon a homeless elderly couple in a highly compromising position in front of the city's Capitol Theater. According to a police report, the witness described seeing 70-year-old Susan Roskillo lying on her back with no pants on and her legs in the air while engaging in inappropriate contact with 60-year-old Robert Kellogg. A responding officer noted that both suspects seemed intoxicated, but based on the information in the report, one was far more cooperative than the other. During questioning, Kellogg allegedly confessed to being intimate with Roskello in public and admitted to more specific aspects of the allegations put forth by the witness. He reportedly apologized for his behavior and admitted that he knew it was wrong. Roskello, on the other hand, was accused of repeatedly screaming that she wanted a lawyer. She and Kellogg were each booked into custody on a felony charge of lewd and lascivious exhibition 
and were held at the Pinellas County Jail on a $10,000 bond. The arrests came on the heels of Roskillo's recent conviction on an open container charge. While Kellogg's rap sheet included prior arrests for trespassing, disorderly intoxication, disorderly conduct, panhandling, battery on a law enforcement officer, obstruction, and having an open container. 6. Sila Hans Police in Seattle, Washington encountered an unpleasant situation in August 2014 while responding to a report of an intoxicated woman humping lawn chairs, exposing herself to a stranger, and urinating in someone's yard. A witness accused 33-year-old Sila Hans of carrying out the perverted display in broad daylight, while she and her family looked on from inside their home. According to a police report, Hans was wearing a short dress and no underwear when she exposed her privates and smacked herself repeatedly in an inappropriate fashion. She then bent over to urinate, revealing her naked behind in the process. An officer noted that the suspect's genitals were clearly exposed to the public when he arrived at the scene. Hans was allegedly extremely drunk during the erratic display, which landed her in police custody on an indecent exposure charge. 5. Wendy Looper and Michael Vaccaro After being married for 12 years, 45-year-old Wendy Looper and 51-year-old Michael Vaccaro divorced, only to decide that they wanted to reconcile. They went to their storage unit in Branditon, Florida, so Vaccaro could retrieve some of his belongings. During the visit, Looper allegedly undressed and asked Vaccaro if he wanted to have intercourse. According to a police report, Vaccaro readily agreed and told Looper to lie down, but she said no, because she didn't want to do it in that position. A heated argument broke out between the couple prompting Vaccaro to walk away in an attempt to de-escalate the situation. When he returned, Looper allegedly told him to remove his belongings from her vehicle and threw an object at him, striking him in the head. She was further accused of getting into the driver's seat and stepping on the gas, causing the vehicle to accelerate forward while Vaccaro was still halfway inside. The car ran over Vaccaro's foot, which was visibly swollen by the time police arrived at the scene. He also sustained a bleeding head wound from the object Looper had thrown at him. Looper was unable to explain her husband's injuries and was booked into custody on a misdemeanor domestic battery charge. 4. Imogen Borman An ordinary night at a gastropub in the Scottish town of Monstros took a bizarre and terrifying turn after former actress Imogen Borman entered the establishment drunk at 10 p.m. in May of 2023. When the bartender asked her what she wanted to drink, the 52-year-old allegedly remained silent. Realizing that the woman wasn't in the right frame of mind, employees went to get help. However, while their attention was diverted elsewhere, Borman climbed behind the bar and began taking swigs from a whiskey bottle. A man tried to stop her reckless behavior as she spat mouthfuls of whiskey onto the floor. But Borman responded by punching him repeatedly in the face. She proceeded to strip naked and climb onto the bar, where she drank from beer taps, sprayed customers with a draft gun, and imitated an inappropriate act using a liquor bottle. Borman was accused of forcing the man she punched to touch her bare chest and attempting to pull his pants down before touching another man's crotch. The heavily intoxicated celebrity was combative toward the four police officers who responded to the disturbance, but she was eventually taken into custody. In early 2024, Borman admitted to public indecency, stealing alcohol, behaving in a threatening or abusive manner, resisting police, two assault counts for her actions against civilians, and assaulting an officer. She's scheduled to be sentenced in April of 2024 and is required to register as a predator due to the nature of her crimes. Through her lawyer, Boorman expressed deep remorse for her actions, 
and said that she's been receiving treatment for her mental health struggles. 3. Elizabeth and Rex Jernigan On a September morning in 2017, a Louisiana couple recorded themselves performing illicit acts on each other in front of a magazine display at the Terrebonne Public Library. They then uploaded the footage to an adult content platform. They had shared other videos of themselves being intimate in other public places throughout the city of Huma and Terrebonne Parish in the past, including a Walmart, a Burger King, and a shopping mall. After discovering the video, law enforcement launched an investigation. The suspects were subsequently identified as 35-year-old Rex Jernigan and his 33-year-old wife, Elizabeth. Their internet page consisted of at least 160 videos, including some that showed Elizabeth acting alone and others that featured the couple engaging in various acts together. Following the investigation, Rex and Elizabeth were each charged with six counts of obscenity. After posting bail, Rex posted a video sharing the news with the couple's 4,200 followers and saying that he hoped he and Elizabeth could get back to filming soon. Nearly two years after their arrests, the couple pleaded guilty and received six-month suspended jail sentences, along with two years of probation each. They were also ordered to perform community service and pay court costs. 2. Brian Danielchik They say that what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, but this wasn't the case for Brian Danielchik who made news headlines across the U.S. in July of 2023 for going on a naked rampage along the Strip. The 35-year-old from Long Island, New York, was attending a friend's bachelor party at the Flamingo Hotel, when he allegedly assaulted a one-legged man at around 11.30 p.m. He fled the property on foot and removed his clothing before entering Harris Hotel and Casino where he was accused of gyrating naked on a poker table and flaunting his privates to disturbed onlookers. Daniel Chick was tackled by police officers and was arrested on suspicion of battery, disorderly conduct, and five counts of indecent exposure. Afterward, he claimed to have no recollection of his behavior, leading his wife Michelle and other family members to support his belief that someone had drugged his drink with a powerful hallucinogen. According to Brian's father, William Danielchik, the bachelor party group was getting ready to leave the Flamingo Hotel's bird bar when someone bought them a round of Irish car bombs. Up until that point, Brian had been feeling fine. Within 10 to 15 minutes of finishing his last drink, however, he began to feel off. The elder Danielchik said that his son was suddenly overcome by intense paranoia causing him to act completely out of character and run off, despite his friend's attempts to calm him down. Michelle Danielchik was 33 weeks pregnant when the incident went viral. Speaking with the New York Post, she described her husband as a great person who would never behave in such a manner without having been drugged. She was adamant that Brian's drink had been spiked and said that the real criminal was the person who slipped the drugs into his beverage. Michelle said that she and Brian were working extensively with doctors to determine what was in his system at the time of his rampage. But it's unclear whether they ever got the answers they were looking for. If it's true that Brian was drugged in the first place, we may never know. And now for number one. But if you want to hear more bizarre and crazy stories, stay tuned after the video for some more content. 1. Bernadette Colatarsi and Philip Daly A Florida couple was accused of fornicating in public not once, but twice over a five-month period starting in September of 2018. In the first incident, 47-year-old Bernadette Colatarsi and 58-year-old Philip Daly allegedly committed an illicit act on a Fort Myers sidewalk in broad daylight. A police officer was patrolling on her bicycle at around half past noon when she witnessed Daly lying on his back with Cola Tarsi hovering over him. At first glance, the cop thought Daly might be having a medical emergency, but she quickly realized what was going on as she approached the couple, who didn't seem to notice her, 
until she cleared her throat and said, seriously, loud enough for them to hear. According to a police report, Cola Tarsi immediately stopped what she was doing and sat up, at which point the officer noticed an open can of beer sitting on the ground next to the suspects. They were each charged with lewd and lascivious behavior, and Cola Tarsi was hit with an additional count for having an open alcohol container. By then, the couple had been arrested numerous times for similar displays, and they also had a handful of trespassing charges on their records. So it was no surprise when they were seen going at it in plain view yet again in February of 2019. Much like the previous incident, the pair were caught in the middle of an inappropriate act on a Fort Myers sidewalk. After being flagged down by witnesses, officers approached Cola Tarsi and Daly as they engaged in intercourse and ordered the couple to stop what they were doing and get dressed. Cola Tarsi initially claimed that she and Daly were dry humping, but officers and civilians both noticed that this wasn't true when they separated from each other under law enforcement's orders. Daly allegedly said that he didn't think he and Cola Tarsi were doing anything wrong and that they enjoyed what they were doing. They were each booked on a lewd and lascivious behavior charge, and Cola Tarsi was additionally charged with possession of a stolen shopping cart. According to police, Cola Tarsi spat on Daly in the back of a police cruiser and was taken into jail as a disorderly prisoner. Records show that neither of the suspects are currently in state prison, and they've managed to stay out of the news since their 2019 arrest. This indicates that perhaps they finally cleaned up their behavior. 18. Disgruntled Customer Clocks Counter Worker while many Americans found themselves out of work or stuck at home during the start of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, Samantha Clark was one of the so-called essential workers who were required to continue at their job. She was working at a Big Five sporting goods store in Modesto one day when a woman called in to ask the staff to hold a swimming pool for her. The person who handled the call told the woman that the store would hold the pool, but they could only do it for a half hour. When the woman failed to show up within the allotted window of time, an employee put the pool back on the shelf and someone else purchased it. When the caller showed up just 15 minutes later, Samantha understood why she was upset that the pool was no longer available, but she was less sympathetic to the woman's decision to start picking things off the counter and throwing them around. Before nonchalantly leaving the store, the angry customer allegedly hit Samantha in the face with a metal object leaving her with a bleeding injury. Samantha told ABC 10 that she didn't even see the attack coming. She didn't even have enough time to try shielding her face when the woman suddenly hit her out of nowhere. In her 17 years working at the store, it was the first time a customer physically attacked her. But the incident happened on the heels of a noticeable increase in disrespectful treatment from customers. According to Samantha, who said that the rudeness became more and more noticeable after the store implemented social distancing and mask requirements. Police officers released a photo of the suspect, but it's unclear whether the woman was identified or arrested. In the meantime, Samantha created a Facebook page called Retail Life During COVID-19, which quickly got tens of thousands of followers. While the page served as a platform for retail workers to vent, Samantha also called on the public to show kindness and patience toward customer service employees. After all, it's really not that much to ask. 17. Natalia Harrell In July 2022, during a night out partying in Miami, a man asked his female friends if they knew any more women who might want to join them for some fun. Some of the group members showed the man a social media account belonging to a 28-year-old Uber driver named Gladys Yvette Borsella. He apparently took a liking to her photo, and Borsella soon joined the festivities. But not everyone seemed happy about her being there. At some point during the night, 24-year-old Natalia Harrell became annoyed by Borsella's dancing and alcohol-induced behavior. Shortly after 2 o'clock in the morning, the two women and five others got into an Uber. During the ride, Borsella and Harrell started arguing, and what began as a simple exchange of words soon escalated into a physical fight. According to a police report, Harrell issued an ominous warning to Borsello, 
saying, You don't want this. You don't want me to go into my purse. Then, at some point, she did exactly that. Harrow is accused of pulling a gun out and firing a shot at Borsella, who passed away from her injuries. Disturbing dashcam footage showed Harrow climbing from the back of the Uber into the middle row, as the driver anxiously watched the situation unfold in the rearview mirror. Shortly after Harrow switched seats, Borsella was hit in the stomach. The Uber driver stopped the car, and everyone but Borsella immediately got out and ran. Harrow, who happened to be pregnant at the time of the shooting, is facing a second-degree murder charge. In early 2023, her attorneys tried convincing a judge to release her from jail while the case worked its way through the court system, arguing that her unborn child didn't deserve to be punished since they had not committed a crime. The judge denied the motion for bond, and Harrell is still currently behind bars pending the outcome of her case. 16. Daniel Willis Taylor Almost any fast food customer can remember a time when something was missing from their order. Whether it be a small sauce packet, a fork, or even an entire sandwich. It's frustrating, but most people don't lose their heads over it. The same cannot be said for a homeless boxer named Daniel Willis Taylor, who was accused of assaulting a female McDonald's worker in Pinellas County, Florida. On New Year's Eve 2018, when he didn't have a straw in his bag, surveillance and cell phone video of the incident showed Taylor grabbing a 20-year-old worker named Yasmeen James by the collar in a fit of rage. He could be seen pulling the young woman across the counter while she pulled back and hit him multiple times while screaming angrily at him. A co-worker quickly intervened and eventually managed to separate Yasmin from the attacker. At that point, a manager came over to see what was happening. In footage of the incident, Taylor was heard demanding that Yasmin get fired, claiming that he was simply trying to ask a question. The young woman shouted back, No, you're going to jail. Yasmin didn't lose her job, thankfully, and it quickly became apparent to the manager that Taylor was the attacker in the situation. While being escorted out of the restaurant, he allegedly kicked another staff member on the way. Authorities charged Taylor with two counts of simple battery. He pleaded guilty to both charges, and the judge sentenced him to 60 days in jail, with credit for 58 days served as he sat in holding waiting for the outcome of the case. Taylor was also ordered to either pay a $1,000 fine or complete 120 hours of community service. 15. Elena Jenkins Most people would agree that COVID-19 mask requirements brought out some of the worst behavior imaginable in people. This was definitely the case when a woman lashed out at a McDonald's worker in San Jose, California back in 2021, after they asked her to leave for not wearing a mask. Instead of following the order to leave, a 40-year-old transient named Elena Jenkins allegedly refused to get out of the restaurant and started hurling racial slurs at the worker while telling them to call the police. When it became clear the customer had no plans to listen rationally, the manager intervened and asked her to leave the building. But Jenkins continued to hurl racial insults, according to the Santa Clara County District Attorney's Office. The suspect was charged with one misdemeanor count each of battery and a hate crime. It's unclear where the case is currently standing. 14. Jeffrey Hernandez Things quickly went from 0 to 100 in two seconds flat. At an auto parts store in Stillwater, Oklahoma one day in May 2023, when a customer accused employees of damaging his car's battery. According to police, 41-year-old Jeffrey Hernandez threatened to cut a worker's throat during a temper outburst over the supposed botched repair job. Court documents claim the situation only escalated after officers arrived. Based on the nature of the threats Hernandez was accused of making, law enforcement planned from the beginning to take him into custody while they investigated. But doing so proved easier said than done. Records state that Hernandez refused to listen to the cops' commands and started swinging at the officers. Police were initially unable to get him under control, giving the suspect an opportunity to run into the business's warehouse, where he threw a car full of items at an officer. Even after the responding cops had Hernandez surrounded, he continued his reckless and irrational behavior. 
According to an arrest report, the suspect lowered his head and charged toward the police, who finally subdued him with the help of a taser. In his possession, officers found a pocket knife and a backpack with a fully loaded semi-automatic handgun inside, along with a magazine holding 12 additional rounds of ammunition. After doing everything in his power to avoid being taken into custody, Hernandez was arrested and charged with two felony counts, one for assault and battery on a police officer, and one for assault with a dangerous weapon. If convicted of both counts, he could face 15 years in prison. Lieutenant T.J. Lowe told local news station KOCO that the store's workers made the right choice to call the police because, in his words, the suspect had every intention of harming somebody. 13. M.D. Jobul Hussein If you've ever gone to a business right after closing, then you know from experience how frustrating it is when you can't get what you came for, especially if an employee is still inside. Most people in this situation would accept that they should have left for the store earlier and simply leave disappointed. But one man from Warren, Michigan was unwilling to take no for an answer. After he arrived at a fish market 13 minutes after closing one night in April 2023. According to the Macomb County Prosecutor's Office, 60-year-old M.D. Jobul Hussein became angry and argumentative when a worker told him the market had closed due to the Ramadan holiday. When things continued not going his way, Hussein allegedly picked up a four pound, or 1.8 kilogram, frozen Hilsa fish and hit the clerk in the head with it. The employee was later taken to the hospital while authorities arrested Hussein on a misdemeanor aggravated assault charge. If convicted, he could face up to a year in jail behind bars. In a statement detailing the incident, Macomb County Prosecutor Peter Lucido said, I never thought I'd have to say this, but if you assault someone with a fish in our county, you will be prosecuted. He also added that a frozen fish is a dangerous object when it's used to hit someone in the head. 12. Rita Bellu In one of the most cringeworthy viral Karen moments in all of 2023, a white woman launched into a racist tantrum toward workers at a Philadelphia restaurant when she lost her cool over a TV show that was playing in Spanish. Video footage of the confrontation at Amy's Family Pizzeria, which originally appeared on TikTok, showed the woman describing her family's alleged history in the United States before hurling insults and threats at Omar Quinones, one of the business's owners. She was heard saying, you're not American, dude. I will look you the F up and get you the F out of our town, implying that she was going to somehow have him deported. The hateful customer, later identified as 55-year-old Rita Francis Bellu, also called Quinones an ignoramus and accused him of not having any respect for her, all because a TV show was playing in Spanish in the background. And it didn't just end there. The suspect was so irrationally upset that once she finished throwing her tantrum like a two-year-old, she demanded a refund for her food. As you can imagine, she didn't ask politely for her money back, but instead said, I'm not going to give my money to some illegal immigrant. Her voice was seeped with disgust as she added, you're in America, you're supposed to learn English. In the video, Bellu can be heard telling Quinones that she was going to carefully count out the money he gave her, indicating that she thought he wasn't trustworthy. She then started arguing with the bystander who was recording the disturbing incident. The footage ended right as an officer came inside the restaurant in response to a call about the situation. According to a criminal complaint, Quinones explained the situation and said that Bellu refused to take any money he tried to give her. He instead gave the money to the cop, who then gave it to Bellu and told her she wasn't welcome in the restaurant. The complaint states that Bellu responded by shrugging and saying, I'm white, I'm white and I'm racist. As if to suggest that her being white was the reason she was accused of being a bigot. Speaking with the Philadelphia Inquirer, Hatboro Police Chief James Gardner said that he didn't think of the incident as a hate crime at first, but as a simple disagreement between a customer and a business owner. But he changed his mind after seeing the video for himself, which he described as over the top and racially fueled. 
Bellew was charged with misdemeanor harassment and ethnic intimidation after what she did. She was quick to publicly apologize for her alleged actions once the video was released, but she seemed to realize that the damage was done and kept it short, telling the Inquirer that she was ashamed of her behavior. She also added that she didn't want to make excuses and that she was deeply sorry. The judge has ordered the case to go to trial. Bellew's words towards Quinones were extremely harsh and full of hate. Just days later, she insisted that she was sorry. 11. Robert Golwitzer Jr. After discovering that a McDonald's employee forgot to give him sauce with his chicken nuggets one day in 2021, a frustrated customer allegedly threatened to damage the restaurant in Ankeny, Iowa. According to police, the disgruntled man called the McDonald's to complain about his missing sauce early that evening. During the conversation, he allegedly threatened to punch a worker and blow the restaurant up. Staff members filed an official complaint, and police didn't have to look hard to track down the suspect, 42-year-old Robert Golwitzer Jr., whose phone number showed up on the store's caller ID. During questioning, he admitted to making the threats and violent statements. Golwitzer was initially charged with one felony count of falsely reporting an explosive or incendiary device and was soon released from jail after posting bond. The charge was later reduced to second-degree harassment. Golwitzer is far from the only person to be accused of threatening to blow up a public place. In early 2023, 41-year-old Els Venter Branch vowed to blow up and shoot up a McDonald's in Alton, Illinois. He has since been indicted for a terrorism charge, along with one count of aggravated battery. In June of 2022, 61-year-old James Rummel was arrested on suspicion of threatening to blow up the world-renowned Tropicana Casino in Las Vegas after refusing to pay his restaurant tab. According to reports, Rummel told a hostess that he actually owned the restaurant and threatened to kill any security guards or officers who confronted him over the dinner fee. He was nevertheless taken into custody and charged with one felony count of making terroristic threats. 10. Gary Kuhn In 2015, when 55-year-old Gary Kuhn tried to order breakfast outside of the normal breakfast hours at a Burger King in Manchester, Connecticut, he reportedly became extremely upset. He entered the fast food joint at 10.55 a.m., 25 minutes after breakfast was over, and was told that it wasn't possible to fulfill his order. Kuhn asked the employee at the counter if they had ever watched the 1993 movie Falling Down, starring Michael Douglas. He then explained that there's a scene in the film where a character shoots up a fast food joint for refusing to serve breakfast, although that's not really an accurate description of what goes on in the movie. The disgruntled customer finished his thoughts by saying, that's what I feel like doing, then threw a coupon at the employee and left. He apparently wasn't interested in the lunch menu, some people would have brushed Kuhn's words off as frustrated ramblings. But you can never be too careful these days. The police soon got involved, and Kuhn was charged with first-degree threatening and second-degree breach of peace. He was unarmed when he was taken into custody and said that he really just wanted a sandwich because he was hungry. But his choice in words landed him in more trouble than he ever could have bargained for. Kuhn was later released and told to return to court at a later date. Would you prefer to stay safe than sorry and report Mr. Kuhn if you were in the employee's shoes that day? Or was this something you wouldn't have taken very seriously? Let us know in the comments below. 9. Jalina Stewart and Dominique Ezel In one of the latest fast food drama installments to make American news headlines, two suspects stand accused of attacking and injuring employees at a Wendy's in Toledo, Ohio, after not getting cheese on their chicken sandwich. Officers responded to the scene around noon one day in 2023 and learned from multiple witnesses that an angry drive through customer had come inside the restaurant in a fit of rage over the simple mistake. According to a police report, the woman barged in with her child in tow, grabbed two milkshakes, and chucked them at employees before hurling other objects in their direction, knocking down a cookie display and injuring a pregnant bystander in the process. She was soon joined by a man who was seen leaving her car and entering the restaurant, where he also allegedly threw items at several workers. 
including the cheeseless sandwich that set off the suspect's tempers to start with. One of the flying objects reportedly struck and damaged a computer. While employees focused on getting the couple to leave, bystanders snapped pictures of the suspects, their car, and their license plate. Witnesses accused the female suspect of grabbing a worker by the hair, pulling her down to the floor, and trying to make off with her cell phone. Luckily, another worker got the phone back before the suspects left, and the worker was left with only a few minor injuries. A few days after the incident, authorities arrested 33-year-old Jalinia Stewart on suspicion of robbery with a specification of attempting to inflict or threaten harm on another person, and one count of having a loaded gun on the grounds of a detention facility. 32-year-old Dominique Azell faces a robbery charge as well. 8. Milton Ray Davis As a restaurant manager, Mike Merkel was used to dealing with upset customers. So he didn't think much of it at first when he got an angry call from a customer in 2018 while working at a Domino's in Guthrie, Oklahoma. The customer, later identified as Milton Ray Davis, was mad because he received the wrong delivery order. Merkel told local news station KFOR that he offered to remake Davis's pizza, but was instead targeted with continued anger. He accused Davis of being belligerent before he actually showed up to the store with the improperly prepared pizza. According to Merkel's account, Davis slammed the pizza on the counter and immediately started yelling. In an attempt to calm the customer down, Merkel gave him a refund. But there were limits to how far the manager was willing to go to calm the situation. And when Davis demanded extra money to cover a $25 tip he claimed he gave to the delivery driver, Merkel flat out said no to his face. At that point, Davis lost what little control he had left over his temper and stormed behind the counter, where he put Merkel in a headlock. Thankfully, he let go after a few seconds, but continued shouting. Right when it seemed as if Davis was finally leaving the store, he turned around and headed back with his hands up, as if to challenge Merkel to a fight. Merkel told KFOR that he had dealt with angry customers, but this was the first time someone physically assaulted him. He said he stayed calm throughout the incident because, in his words, dude, come on, it's just pizza, man. Davis eventually left the restaurant and was tracked down by police. He allegedly admitted to his behavior toward Merkel, but pleaded not guilty to any assault charge. While Davis seemed to care deeply about the situation at hand, Merkel didn't see what the big deal was saying, some people get mad over the stupidest things. 7. Pantsless Customer Smashes Restaurant Windows As a New York City restaurant owner, 49-year-old Jenny Shi has seen her fair share of eccentric and bizarre situations. But when a regular customer showed up at her business, four choices and a soup, wearing no pants or underwear one day in 2022, members of her staff told the man to get out. It wasn't Shi's first experience with a problematic man who had a habit of urinating in front of the restaurant and coming inside the business without clothes on. And because Jenny and her staff were aware that the man struggled with mental health issues, they were as patient as they possibly could be when he came in. In most cases, they served him as quickly as possible to avoid any trouble. But there were obviously some situations that the employees couldn't sit by and ignore. So they had kicked the man out of the restaurant multiple times in the past. It seemed like a normal day when they sent him away for once again not being properly dressed in a public place. Later that afternoon, the man came back, this time wearing pants and armed with a hammer. He smashed the storefront's windows and doors. He left behind piles of glass and a huge mess for the workers, but was quickly arrested in connection to the incident. She told the New York Post that in 18 years of business, nothing like this had ever happened before, and that she suspected the customer was off his meds. She explained that a lot of the time, the customer acted normal. Instead of harboring anger toward the man for his destructive tendencies, she said that she hoped he got the help he desperately needed, and that she would rather see him get treatment than be thrown in jail. Would you have an easier time forgiving someone for destroying your property if you suspected they were mentally ill? Or would it be hard for you to look past the person's actions regardless of what was happening in their mind? Let us know in the comments below. 6. Naked and Disruptive Customers 
A Texas man became disruptive and unpredictable after allegedly dipping his cigarette into PCP one night back in 2023. Police crossed paths with a suspect after getting reports about a man running around naked outside a Whataburger in Bryan late at night. Just as callers described, he was wearing nothing except his birthday suit. Identified as 40-year-old Eric McIntosh, the man admitted to his drug use, which explained his bizarre behavior. He was charged with one count of disorderly conduct by exposure and one count of possession of a controlled substance. Criminal charges are a big deal in any situation, but at the end of the day, the embarrassment of this ordeal most likely trumped any legal consequences Macintosh had to suffer through. It's apparently not as uncommon as one might think for people to show up naked in public. In early 2016, a woman named Jennifer Mary Nicholson was accused of standing up in the middle of a crowded Waffle House in Marietta, Georgia, and taking her clothes off. She then allegedly punched another woman in the face and started randomly hurling plates at customers. In another case that happened in 2019, a Florida woman whose behavior was equally as bizarre as her name caused a scene at a Waffle House in Pensacola. Freedom Rider Zobrist was asked to leave the restaurant earlier that night because of unruly behavior. She returned later on and allegedly threatened to shoot the manager and everyone else in the restaurant before finally going outside, dropping her pants, and dancing around the parking lot. 5. Rachel Lee Schuerman In April 2022, after enduring a work shift from hell at a Little Caesars in Enid, Oklahoma one evening, a young man went to a police station and reported a disturbing encounter he had with an angry customer earlier that day. According to records, Chris Beard was working at the restaurant after school when a woman, who was later identified as 71-year-old Rachel Lee Schuerman, pulled up to the drive-thru and ordered two pizzas and some crazy bread. Beard told the woman that the restaurant was out of crazy bread for the day. And while many people realize that problems like these are not actually the fault of underpaid teenage employees, Others don't hesitate to direct their anger at counter workers who have no control over a restaurant's food supply. This woman fell into this category and evolved into a racist meltdown that was captured on camera and soon earned her a reputation as a viral Karen. According to a police report, Schuerman asked Beard if he wanted a diploma and repeatedly called him racial slurs. She then asked the teenager if her words were hurting his feelings. Beard replied no, which only seemed to upset the disgruntled customer even more. In addition to the hate-filled insults and commentary, Schuerman was accused of getting out of her car, approaching the drive through window, and slapping Beard straight across the face twice. The heavily redacted report says that the restaurant manager confronted the suspect, who sped away from the scene laughing. Nobody called the police at first, but Beard was traumatized by the incident, according to a lawyer who represented the young man. After telling his parents what happened, he reported the incident, which investigators said they verified via surveillance and bystander footage. According to a charging affidavit, Schuerman told an officer that she was just joking around with the kid, and that she teases everyone like that. She admitted to calling Beard a racial slur once, but denied saying it twice, despite being confronted with the video footage. Schuerman was charged with malicious harassment based on race. Now, over a year later, the status of the case is unclear. 4. Paul Fracasso It's easy to go from being hungry to being hangry when you haven't eaten in a while and your food seems to be taking forever. Most people just bite their tongue and wait, but a Papa John's customer in Drapper, Utah, decided to take action one day in 2021 when he went to the restaurant and his pizza wasn't ready. The customer, later identified as 32-year-old Paul Fracasso, placed his order by a phone call, but the eatery was having a few issues with its ordering system that day. So it had failed to process the order before he and another man came to pick it up. In an attempt to accommodate the upset customers, an employee offered to put in a new order. But the situation was past the point of fixing, and the men allegedly started swearing at the three workers who were on duty that day. The police were quickly called, 
but by the time they arrived, the suspects had already left the scene. Later that night, someone fired between five and six shots into the restaurant's front window, causing shattered glass to strike one employee in the face while others ducked away for cover. Based on a witness description, police tracked down Fracasso and his friend in a nearby garage about 10 minutes after the shooting. Officers performed gun residue tests on the men, and Fracasso's came back positive, to no surprise. He was quickly charged with discharge of a firearm and aggravated assault. Just days later, a man went into a Little Caesars restaurant in Knoxville, Tennessee, and held employees at gunpoint after getting impatient over his food. After initially being told that his pizza would take only 10 more minutes to cook, 63-year-old Charles Doty Jr. left the restaurant. He returned shortly after with an AK-47 and allegedly demanded his order at gunpoint, along with some free breadsticks for his trouble. According to news reports, a woman who had already received her pizza offered to let Doty have hers instead. He reportedly ate the woman's pizza, then fled the scene and was later arrested on four counts of assault and one count of aggravated kidnapping. 3. Amanda Martinez In November 2021, an employee at the Sol de Jalisco restaurant in Temple, Texas, took a phone complaint from a customer who said her soup was so hot that it melted the lid of the disposable container it was given to her in. The worker apologized to the woman and offered to give her a refund and a free meal, but it unfortunately wasn't enough. Later that day, the customer entered the restaurant and started yelling and cursing at a counter worker. In a TikTok that went viral, the employee explained that she warned the woman that she needed to either calm down or get out, or she would call the police. The restaurant's security camera was rolling as the suspect flung her hot soup into the worker's face. While the soup had cooled down a bit by then, it was still hot, according to the employee, who said that she was more bothered by the spices, which made her feel as if she was getting pepper sprayed. The customer, later identified as Amanda Martinez, was banned from the restaurant and charged with assault not long after. She pleaded no contest and received a deferred sentence of 15 months, which meant that as long as she stayed out of trouble and followed rules set by the court during that time period, she would avoid jail time. Martinez was also ordered to perform six days of work for the county in lieu of serving six days behind bars. During her sentencing hearing, she apologized to the victim for her actions, which she was not required to do, suggesting that her remorse was genuine and that she actually felt bad. 2. Jason Morrison Clark Kelman was doing some routine maintenance at one of the laundromats he owned in Durango, Colorado in March 2023, when he noticed a customer leaving. He thanked the man for his business, but was met with anger from the patron, who was upset over the laundromat's recent change in ownership and felt as though the machines were taking longer than usual. Kelman later told the Durango Herald that he offered the man a refund, but the customer continued to make berating remarks while he walked outside. Determined to make the situation right, Kelman followed the man and once again offered a refund. He approached the customer's van, saying that there was no need to be so upset and tried to talk to him civilly. When it became clear that the man was not open to reason, Kelman went behind the van to snap a photo of the license plate, just in case any future incidents happened. In a shocking act of violence that was captured on video, the customer threw the van in reverse and stepped on the gas, pinning Kelman against the side of the building. The business owner suffered a broken arm and a dislocated wrist. Based on security footage and the van's license plate, police identified the suspect as 51-year-old Jason Morrison. Authorities issued a felony arrest warrant for first-degree assault but we're still looking for Morrison, according to recent updates on the case. It's unclear whether they tracked him down or if he's still at large. If you've worked in customer service, then you probably know better than anyone that there's simply no pleasing some people. Have you ever gone out of your way to fix a customer's complaint, only to realize that nothing you said or did would be enough for them? Tell us about it in the comments below. 1. Vernie Dickens the thought of waiting for a bad haircut to grow out can feel like an eternity, but even in the worst situations, 
most people do little more than leave a bad review warning others about their experience. Every now and then, though, a disappointed customer takes things to the next level. A Kansas City barber learned this the hard way in 2022, when a man who was unhappy with his haircut tried to resolve his grievances with physical violence. According to court documents, 33-year-old Vernie O. Dickens wasn't charged at all after he complained about his new hairdo. When he returned to the barbershop the next day in hopes of getting his hair fixed, the barber who served him the previous day wasn't there. Another barber who was working told Dickens to just take a seat and wait. Dickens erupted with rage at this, prompting the barber to threaten to call the police. But before that could happen, the suspect allegedly pulled a gun out and fired two shots at the barber before chasing the victim out into the parking lot. Seeing that the barber was in danger, a vigilant bystander rushed to his car to grab his own handgun. He later claimed that when he rounded the corner of the building, he found Dickens holding the barber up at gunpoint. The witness's attempts to reason with the suspect failed as Dickens allegedly pulled the trigger. Luckily, the weapon malfunctioned, causing the clip to fall down to the ground, and the quick-thinking witness tackled Dickens. He managed to disarm the suspect and continue to restrain him until police got there. The victim was shot in the back, but survived his injuries. He told police that Dickens was standing over him and was about to kill him when the gun malfunctioned and the bystander helped. Dickens was charged with first-degree assault, unlawful weapon use, and two counts of criminal action. If convicted of the unlawful weapon charge, he could face up to 30 years in prison, not counting the 15 years each for the other three charges. Would you rather be attacked by a raging drunk person during a night out and receive an injury that requires stitches, or spend years living next to a couple of home nudists who seem to enjoy being watched? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!